The Daily Ramble on Clariton Booze. Good afternoon and welcome to The Daily Ramble. My name's Gary and here is my celebratory Daily Ramble for this sunny afternoon in April. It's beautiful out there. It's lovely. I hope it stays like this for tomorrow. But anyway, look, um, lots to talk about, so let's get on with it. Uh, Moy's out. So he's got 36 days to go. 36 days, a.k.a. six league games left. Six more low blocks, maximum or seven if you include Labour. That would be a low block as well, you know it will. Right, so um, what do I base this on? Well, firstly, the past week, the writing has been on the wall. You don't have to be a genius to work this out. Firstly, we had Tim Stighton, who has more and more started creeping into the media recently. He was totally quiet. Then he appeared on the telly in Germany, and he's getting quoted all over the media. Now he's, um, he's open and speaking honestly. He said that I am euphoric at every game and every training session because I feel I'm in the right place, in the right league. I wanted to have overall responsibility. I wanted to take control myself. It was a stark change for all three people, me, Moyes and Sullivan, to be managing. Didn't expect that. That wasn't why I was hired. David Moyes, I, I think, noticed through my transfers that my work was important. Uh, conversely, I learned an incredible amount from him when it comes to perspectives on football. Uh, he went on to say, Bad perspectives of football. <laughs> Squad restructuring is a four to five year project. I was at Verda for 18 years and I probably could have worked there longer, but I also wanted to experience something different and never find myself thinking I should have done that. But what I experience in England is particularly good for my development. Can you imagine coming from Germany, like this structured regime that they had in uh, Leverkusen and previously in Bremen and coming face to face with Sullivan and Moyes. That must have been one hell of a culture shock and a test of his diplomacy skills. Yeah, it, it must have been. It must have been tough. Anyway, look, the second piece of evidence this morning, what really nails it for me, is uh, none other than um, uh, Stighton abuser, um, uh, Sean Whetstone, who's been constantly, for the last several months, pumping up David Moyes and dismissing Tim Stighton, right? It, promoting, almost promoting that he should go to Liverpool, right? This morning, a very short tweet from Sean where he finally admitted, we can confirm, the senior source confirmed that Tim Stighton, the technical director, will remain with the Hammers after the summer. So Sean, if you're watching, I think you better get that 100 quid ready for, for Nick. I think you're going to owe him that or owe the charity that. So if you take both of these messages in sequence, um, you know, you can see that the messaging is starting to get out there. I, I predicted a few weeks ago that, you know, as soon as we head out of Europe, um, they'll start talking about the next the next stage. Uh, they're only, that you know, I think this is done for probably the right reasons in, in to keep it on a level. Uh, I don't like the way the club sits by while the fans get abused, but hey, it is what it is. Never been any different, has it? Um, and, I, and I think, um, you know, the extended hug, the happy hug and chat between Alonso and Stighton after the game on Thursday, that tells me that Stighton is is feeling comfortable in his own skin and he can do what he likes. I, I, I dare say a few months ago he might have thought twice about doing that, but now I, I think he probably just does it to uh, so that Moyes enjoys the, uh, uh, the, the scenes. Um, him and Moyes tolerate each other, we've always known that, you know. Um, he's previously, you know, a couple of months ago, he previously alluded to the media that he wasn't that happy and he was okay, but he wasn't ecstatic. Um, and now he describes himself as euphoric. Now that's a, that's a big change. He was also kind of open, you know, open to an approach from Liverpool. Well, he wasn't open to an approach. He said he was happy for, for them to be interested, flattered for instance, right? So it's a good, uh, you know, diplomatic way of, of, of handling these things. Um, you know, but look, let's be honest, there's no way Tim would have the clearance to release these words without the club giving him their agreement. Also to say stuff like that, you know, that is stuff that, if it wasn't true, would immediately be debunked by uh, the senior source. Um, so, in, instead it was confirmed. Um, he said he learned a lot from Moyes, and I'm sure he did, like how not to approach football matches. Uh, I, I would suggest it's uh, scared him away from any any thoughts of, of hiring a defensive manager in future, don't you think? Um, yeah, Moyes has more power than he should, we know that. Um, and, uh, but Tim is a grown-up. He's bided his time. Must have been a difficult period for him. But the fact is, he's got a whole season of Premier League experience now. He's been you know, in, with the team in training. He's been at the sidelines watching the games. He knows a lot more about Premier League football firsthand than he did a year ago. So he's much better placed to pick a manager now and also to pick signings as well. And my God, it's going to be a big restructuring job this summer with the 
the fucking tiny little aging squad that Moyes is leaving behind once you strip out the likes of Paquette who's going and likely Caduce as well if you believe the Barcelona link. Um, but only if Sullivan, it'll only work if Sullivan keeps his nose out. Go off with Bouncy Booth Sullivan. You know, you would have actually done, Sullivan, the best thing ever in recent times for the club by giving Stein control. Now, step away. Don't ruin it, right? <clears throat> he needs to be able to get on with his job through th thick and thin. Even when things... It's not all going to be up, is it? It's going to be some downs as well. It's going to be a bumpy road, especially rebuilding a squad. It's going to take a while. In Tim's words, maybe five years to rebuild a squad in its entirety. And that's right. And so we need a you know a first-team coach and, and Tim to grow with the club and the squad to grow with the club and the young players to develop. It's going to take patience and you will get idiots who, who might, and we might have a brilliant entertaining season next year. We'll thoroughly enjoy it. We'll finish 10th or 12th or something. And then someone will tweet, well, he's no David Moyes, is he? Look, he finished 7th. Who gives a fuck about 7th, honestly? Who gives a fuck? You know, it's just a place in the league. And I've got to be honest, I'm a bit bored with Europe. I, I know the people who go to European games are not bored. They love the away days, but, you know... Let's look at who we've um, who we've beaten this year in this you know glamorous run to the quarter final. We've beaten uh, Freiburg four times. We've beaten Olympiakos once out of two. Who's the other one we beat? Bakatopola, fucking giants of Europe, to reach a quarter final. So when you bounce around the term quarter final, it does contain final, but really, if you hadn't got to that quarter final, you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. League Cup. We reached the quarterfinal. We beat Lincoln City, right? Then, and this is probably our only great night of cup football this year, when we smashed Arsenal. We smashed Arsenal's second team. When Caduce was let, let off the leash and so was everybody else and they destroyed them, right? Um, you know, nothing Arsenal could do about it, even though they brought their big guns on later. One of the performances of the season. But he went to low block the following week. Shows how much he, he liked it. Face like thunder after that game. I wonder why. Um, so look, it's goodbye, David Moyes. Goodbye, David Moyes. Wish I never knew you at all. Um, goodbye, David Moyes. Only six more games to go. Starting with a low block against Fulham tomorrow. Leverkusen on Thursday and likely Palace on Sunday. Listen, it's shit or bust for him now. He's got nothing less left in his mind and his media mates. He still think he's got a chance if we qualify for Europe that, that he's, that he's going to get a job. He ain't going to get a job. The only offer he's got is the one that's on the table. It's the, the first team coach working for Tim. He won't take it. His ego's too big. Uh, we know for a fact what he's been up to this year. This season's been about him destroying Stuyton. He's blocked him all the way. Tried not to use his players, except Alvarez, who obviously he, he, he leaked to the press that he was looking at anyway, so, oh yeah, I could use him. It took Kudos, Mohamed Kudos, the magnificent Mohamed Kudos, took him 10 fucking games to get a start when he'd just scored a hat-trick for Ajax the previous week in Europe. Oh, it takes a while for this to get... Oh, what did the fucking, the number two say? He came so patronising. Oh, yeah, he's a lovely lad. He's come over to... Um, uh, you, you can tell he, he wants to do good things. He's a fucking superstar, this kid. Put him on the pitch. Anyway, when he started putting him on the pitch, fucking never stopped scoring, did he? Put Gave him 20 minutes against Newcastle, 2-1 down. Boom! 2-0. Played him against Arsenal. Arsenal second string, expecting a tough night. Boom, boom. Fucking world is... Played him against Brentford. Fucking two goals. He didn't stop scoring. And Moyes might be a lot of things, but he ain't fucking stupid. If there's a geezer there on, you know, available to him, who's going to, because he don't he don't structure anything attacking, that he's, he can use, who's going to get him out of holes, like he did twice at Burnley and, and Wolves and various other places, he will use him. He's not stupid, right? But he did resent using him and he didn't want to use him because look at Dinos. Dinos, he fucking couldn't get game for love nor money. Joined a similar time could do stuck sat on the bench no matter what Aguirre did he fucking couldn't get dropped we had to wait we had to wait for Aguirre to get injured we had to wait eventually he got into the side he was nervous because obviously the pressure on him Moyes is treating him like an outsider the pressure's on him he did he, he's played in the Premier League before got rejected by Arsenal nerves and mental side of the game must have been messing with his head right so he didn't do very well when he first came into the team so he got dropped again had to wait for the next batch of injuries but since his second coming, the second coming of Dinos, he has been nothing short of magnificent. A giant, a true giant of a man. Um, you know, what Moyes has done with this squad 
is exactly the same as what he did to handicap us in that year, two years ago, when we lost the semi-finals of Frankfurt. He narrowed it down so we had a tiny squad with nobody in reserve, so he just ran the players on the pitch into the ground, even though some of them we know are injury-prone, like Antonio. Um, the way he does it is reckless. And how we pay him five million a year, I will never know. He's not worth fucking 50 bob, in my opinion. Um, in the winter window, every single Stiton and Sullivan, uh, Sullivan as well, was offering people like Zaha, right? Because that's not a Stiton pick, right? Zaha, do you want Wilfred Zaha? Yeah, no, no, I don't. Because he still bears a grudge from the Man United go days. You know he does. I think he, he, he does suspect that he slept with his daughter. Uh, that's not true, apparently. That's not true. It's a horrible rumour. Right, um, anyway, look, he will do anything to protect David Moyes. And the players that he got rid of, Fornells, the wonderful Fornells, who loves West Ham and always will, um, uh, the outspoken carer, and the very outspoken Benny, he wanted him out of the fucking club. Get, get, get out. You, you don't, you don't, you're going to show dissent. You're not going to agree with everything I do. Fuck off. So he got him out. That's the reason he did it. He bought in someone who he thought would be his saviour. He thought he'd be Lingard, right? But it wasn't Lingard. It was Calvin Phillips, right? Calvin Phillips. Fucking seven million a year. Sorry, seven million for 14 weeks of football and 21 weeks all in all, right? But let's focus on the... If you if you work it over 14 weeks, it's half a million a week. If you go over the full term until the end of June, which is for some reason when we have to pay him until, it's about 333 grand a week. Still a lot of money. Now, if you extrapolate that out over a four-year contract, that makes him worth 86 million quid. I'll leave that there. Think about that. Right. Um... And this encapsulates the problem with Moyes. He hates flair players. He loves plodders. He loves proven plodders. It's why he signed Phil fucking Neville, uh, stalwart of Everton, right? This is, the, you know, this is, this is a, a bloke, a leopard that will never change his spots. And I've got a bit of evidence here that I'm going to share with you, which I think will be, it'll open your eyes a little bit, right? And this is about his time at Everton. I'm going to read it word for word, so bear with me. For much of his tenure, Everton manager David Moyes has been heavily criticised for employing what many consider to be negative tactics. During the recent FA Cup match against Bolton Wanderers, he was booed by supporters when he substituted misfiring striker Nikola Jelovic, no doubt playing up front on his own with no support and no service, in the 80th minute and instead replaced him with another attacker, instead of replacing him with another attacker, bought on defender Johnny Heitinger. Where have we seen this before? Instead of folding, however, the side readjusted their shape and the Dutchman went on to store, score a late winner. A Moyes masterclass, right? But despite the victory, Everton fans are not stupid, Moyes still remains a polemical figure for many supporters who feel that he has sabotaged genuine attempts to progress the club with his guarded approach. This case was highlighted when the Toffees lost toothlessly, love that word, to... Derby rivals Liverpool, well, that's a big deal up there, in last season's FA Cup semi-final. He's a gutless wonder who can only take you so far. We've said it again and again and again. Same story at Everton, same story with us. The only two clubs really, unless you count Preston, where he's ever been successful. Successful. Puh. Right. But look, um, that is um, a little bit of a history of David Moyes. I, I can't wait. I tweeted last night. I cannot wait until you open Twitter and there isn't a picture, a quote, people arguing about him. The name David Moyes is never fucking mentioned, right? I want him erased. I don't want to ever fucking mention him, talk about him like Allardyce, right? You only talk about him bitter memories. We'll always remember that one single night in Prague, right? But you don't sell your soul for the third tier uh, European trophy. It was fantastic. It was amazing. Watch my video from the day after. I loved it, right? Always will love it. Great memories. But you don't sell your club down the river and, and think that that is all you can do and you've peaked. That's your pinnacle. It ain't. Not for this club. Look at our support. You're having a laugh if you think we peaked there. We have not peaked. We've nowhere near peaked. So what do I expect from West Ham? This is uh, this is the thing you get, right? And and I and I got I've had this quite often. I even had it from like my cousin yesterday. What do you expect from West Ham? They're in seventh. Who could you can do better? What, what above seventh? My mind don't work like that, right? 
a, a cup and three European campaigns? Well, I won't bother answering these because we've knocked them back so many times. It's boring, right? We've debunked them over and over again. They're all bullshit. Um, so, so let me tell you what I want, right? What I want is I want the fun to return. I want to be excited to go to football. I want to watch entertainment. I want to be entertained. I want to, you know, I want to look forward with eager anticipation to the next home game or the away game or whatever I'm doing. But here's what I'd like for a, a new first team coach. Experience and track record developing young players. Uh, a coach that works respectfully within the, the director of football structure. No talking to fucking Brady and Sullivan directly. Deal with your boss. Deal with the players. There's plenty of things for you to do to keep you busy. Coach who plays the same system in the first and the youth teams, making it for, for an easier transition between. Right? Seamless. A coach who uses all the players signed for him. He doesn't get a choice. Right? The director of football knows which parts are needed. Director of football sells, buys, sells, buys. And we've got to get used to as well, us as fans. You know, for instance, if Caduce went this summer for 80 million, we've made a 50 million profit, a 40 million profit on him straight away, right? I think, I'd, I think that's better for the club to take that 40 million in and reinvest it than to watch him potentially sulk him for a season. You see what I mean? So we've got to get used to players coming in and going out, but I think we're going to be shopping in a in a bigger market than the likes of Brighton, right? And I think we've got the, uh, you know, we will hold on to some people for a lot longer. It'll only be the superstars. It'll only be the superstars. And uh, and they, you know, let's be brutally honest, the superstars at the moment don't belong with us. Maybe one day they will, right? Uh, a coach who plays attractive, progressive football, to me, Poster Cogley, for instance, is too much the other way. He's too much all-out attack. We need someone who can change a game, and he cannot change a game, Right? Um, I want someone that could do what Alonso does and actually change the game, change the tactics several several times in a half, right? Uh, by I don't know by magic, but uh, but you know, or at least could change it at half time. Someone that can use substitutes sensibly to change a game because that is why you've got so many substitutes now. It's an option to put half a side on the pitch, right? You can change a game with half a side, right? You can literally change the whole shape of the team, right? And sometimes you might need to rescue a game or save a game or, or protect the points, which means switching to a more rigid approach at the end or the second half. That's fine. Horses for courses. You do what you have to to beat the opposition, not to stop the opposition. Use the squad appropriately in every game. Give importance to domestic cups. And that's why I'm not fussed about Europe. Give the opposition teams a headache, something to think about. Don't just go to fucking Man United and roll over. And Arsenal and roll over. I know we didn't this year, by the way, but we did at home. We fucked that. But we will at Man City, right? We did at Liverpool after a promising start, right? Get players to think they can beat anyone because that's the only way, psychologically, it's going to work. If you've gotten worried about the opposition before they go on the pitch, you've half lost. Someone who's a great man manager, inclusive, uses the, looks after the whole squad, all 20 whatever it is players, plus... Works with Noble and looks after and is familiar with the all the youth teams at all levels and the parents and the families of the players. That is what good managers do because people management is the primary role. He's got to keep that whole squad happy. If they're not playing, he's got to give them hope that they're going to be playing. If they perform and do the business when they come on, you've got a chance, right? Confidence. Build up a, a rapport with the fans. Look at Jurgen Klopp and what he's done with, with the people of Liverpool. Fucking amazing. Uh, you know, and, and Poster Cogley with the Spurs fans, but yeah, I'm in the two minds of him. Uh, show respect for the fans above all, and that is where Poster Cogley excels. He sets expectations on the team. He doesn't play the team down and say, little old West Ham, oh, we're fortunate to have done this, we're fortunate to have done that. Oh, they're a great team. No, talk about the opposition disparagingly, right? Fucking, we, yeah, we've got a chance, we're going to go and beat them. You know, that's what we expect. We're at home to Burnley, we're going to beat them. You know, set the bar high, yeah? Right, okay, this is a long ramble, by the way, and it's a varied one, sorry. Uh, Fulham tomorrow. Now, Marco Silva, he was rumoured to be joining us last summer. Uh, but Moyes won, well, Paqueta and Bowen, and, and a little nod from Suchek, won that cup. Um, had we lost that final... It's likely we would have had Marco, Marco Silva in post. You know that. Right, uh, anyway, look, he's a great manager. They're sitting comfortable. They lost uh, Mitrovic, I think, uh, their striker. They're, they're a good team. They're a good team. Um, 
they destroyed us earlier in the season 5 0 that ain't gonna happen again we didn't have alvarez that day and we had uh we didn't have emerson either we had crestwood left back and he was like a a um a thingy in the headlights a deer in the headlights um tomorrow we'll give them the ball and uh, assemble the defensive chain, as as Granite Jack, Jack has called it. I think he'll stick with five now, because the more defenders, the, the merrier, as he thinks. Uh, Fulham don't usually... Mind you, with things like... Fulham don't usually... Um, they, they don't like give, being given the ball. And with Alvarez back, I expect it'll be like the Bournemouth game, where we gave them the ball. And they didn't like it very much. They had loads of chances. They scored one. And then we got the penalty in the end. I'm going for a draw tomorrow. Now, um, that is me at the moment. Me, in January, predicted a home win, covering my bases. Um, in order to reach, reach 54 points, by the way, we're on 48 at the moment. We need to win two more games. 54 points was my prediction for the second half of the season. We've got, the way I see it, we're going to go to Chelsea, play the bad rollover. We're going to lose, even though they're shit. We're going to lose against Liverpool. They're chasing the title. Mind you, they're wobbling. We're going to lose away to uh, City. We'll play the badge there as well. We'll just roll over, right? So it leaves us with three games. It leaves us with Fulham, Palace, Luton. Luton are going to be fighting for their lives. So, and we struggled to beat them last time at their place. Uh, it's difficult, isn't it? It's all I can see from these three games at the moment. If I was predicting, is draw, 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 which is which would be terrible. So, let's hope we can get off to a fast start tomorrow and not sit back and invite them on because what happens there, I think, is after the other night, once it gets to the second half, our players are going to be fatigued, massively fatigued. So surely we've got to start this game quickly and try to get a goal. This ain't about the long game, right? This is about, well, what's the opposite of long game? Short game? But anyway, it's it's like, it, it it's 30 minutes. 30 minutes, try and win the game, and then sit back and defend, right? That 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 would be my, that would be my, my advice, but... Again, we want to avoid chasing the fucking shadows, chasing the ball around, because we've got Leverkusen in, in four days after that. Um, I don't know, don't hold much much hope for Leverkusen. I'm going to go and hope for the best, obviously, hoping for Miracle. But, um, you know, I, I, we're going to struggle without without Paqueta, without... He was playing as a defender, but it's Paqueta. Just having his presence on the pitch helps the other players. You know that from when he was absent, right? Even when he plays bad. Our results have improved with him in the team. Uh, there's no him. There's no Emerson. So the left-hand side has gone completely, right? So, fuck, what are we going to do there? I mean, we're going to move Cresswell out there. We're going to put Johnson out there. Stick to a five. You can't stick to a five, in my mind, if you've got to chase a 2-0 deficit. So that means that it will be Cresswell. And what's he going to do? Put Johnson in front of him? I, I just don't know what he's going to do because we've got Bowen out as well probably unless painkilling injections lets him come through and um and, and maybe dinos so i'm hoping dinos recovers for tomorrow but i don't think he'll play tomorrow anyway he'll rest him for the Leverkusen game rightfully so probably one thing i will agree with right right i don't think Leverkusen were significantly better on a player to play a basis they've got some stars but so have we they were a better team though way way better team and uh you know the longer Moyes insults Brazil's number nine by likening him to likening his role to that of Stephen Pinar at Everton, uh, and expecting him to mainly defend, and the same with Caduce, getting him to defend over the else, it's insulting. That's probably why we're going to lose. Primarily, why we're going to lose both of those players, because no matter what the club does and Stuyton and Sullivan and everything else, they've stood by why this prick has done this, right? It's insulting. It shouldn't be allowed. It shouldn't be allowed. But anyway, look. Yeah, he's, I, that was another one. I wrote it down here, right? Same with Caduce. He sees him as nothing more than his uh, modern-day Leon Osman. Yeah. Right, that was a long ramble. Bloody hell, I've been going on for ages. Um, but finally finished. Finally come to a conclusion. Don't forget, 36 days to uh, to go. Please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a... Um, uh, hit the bell not not notification icon. Give it, give it a like, because it helps with the, the old algorithm. And also, tell me in the comments, what are you going to do on the day David Moyes finally leaves West Ham? Good night, have a good evening. Come on, you irons.